she's going to come in with, okay? And I want to get to the outside. I'm going to deflect to the right, okay? We're going to give you two or three things you can do, and you can come out here and try any one of them, okay? And um, you deflect it to the right. It isn't essential to grab the hand right away, although you eventually will, okay? Well, all I'm going to do is come around, grab the wrist, and again, I don't have it very securely. I'm just latching onto it. Bring this hand up here, and if you go right up the jawline, you've got a nice little nerve in there. You can go to the base of the neck, either place, okay? She's got a high D on, so she can hide everything, okay? Either hook in there or right at the base of the neck, okay? You don't need to know nerve names. Someday I'll learn them, but, okay? As long as you know where stuff is, that's what's important, okay? And all I'm going to do is dig in and bring down, okay? I have the wrist. Okay? Now, if I'm a nice jiu-jitsu person, I'm just going to go on a nice wrist press and break the wrist. And I'm done. Okay? If I don't want to do that, I'm here. And something tells me I want to be like a cop. Okay? At this point, what we're going to have you do is take, we don't want to step over her because <clears throat> what happens if you step over a person? You expose something there. You expose something, okay? And you're either going to get a love tap from underneath Okay, which you will know about, or you're going to get a grab and pull, which you will also know about. Okay, so you never want to step over this person. That's not good. Okay, we want to step around them. And as I step, I'm turning the wrist. Okay, and here, and please roll over. Okay, thank you. Verbal command out. And also, it's important. Okay, make sure you have the person turn their head the other way. Thank you. Now, the reason for this. Okay, just in terms of street. If they turn their head the other way, first of all, they think they're more comfortable. And they are. What it really does is it lowers the shoulder down so you can get it down to the ground easier. So you ultimately have more leverage to do your submission. And all I'm going to do here again is a wrist press. Okay. Okay, there are other things I can do too. But we want to do this fairly fast. You can come in and ah, do your coming thing and whatnot, but we don't have to worry about that. So, so again. This person is going to come out. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. Fine here. Okay. Over. Okay. Now, if you want them to stay on their stomach, on their back, and do this, that's fine too. Okay. If you want to come in, drop down on the upper arm, tricep, that's okay too. Won't break anything, but it'll hurt my head. <laughs> okay. And, uh, most of you know from jiu-jitsu, pain and injury are two different things. And you don't want to injure a person if you can avoid it. You just want to make them think they are. Okay, so anyone need to see this again? Okay. <laughs> this is simple. When you're bringing this person in and we've taken them down, okay, so some of you, some of you are ending up like this, okay, or you're ending up like this, I can't even do this. Uh, okay, and what you have, you're on the ball of your foot, which means you're not balanced. Okay, and what you have to do is keep your, you want yourself close to this person. He can watch TV. <laughs> this is really, this is comfortable for him. Okay, okay, but it, it also gives you a lot more control. Okay, because, okay, or even if you're here and uh, get the arm, thank you. Okay, this is not so comfortable for him. But again, you want to keep this, this leg here across with straight up and down so it can work as a pivot, okay? Because if, if, he, if, if he does cause problems, okay, well, all I want to be able to do is take this and go back down on this, onto this knee, okay, which will cause him a little more grief, okay? And I haven't done anything over here yet. Okay, you, you, and that, there, that's why you're, you're going down and you want to keep yourself balanced. One knee down, one, one knee up, either way. Okay, okay, next one. Okay, uh, we're still going to work from the outside. We're going to go into an arm bar. Okay, he's going to come across here, across. I'm going to wrap around. Okay, I've trapped his arm. Okay. If he's a good judo person, I'm going to get thrown right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, but I don't want to do that. I have a version of being thrown. So as I trap this arm, this hand is going to come around to this side, take him back on the side of the face. Okay. Now, you can do it this way, like you're swimming. Okay. 
we can come around this way, side of the nerve. There's a nerve over here. Here. If, if this was Kitsugo, you stick your finger up his nose or stick your finger inside his lip and pull. Okay, that works. Okay, whatever you can get, you use. Okay, the face has many openings. Under the jaw. What? Under the jaw. Under the jaw. Okay, under the jaw this way. You can stick a finger in his ear. That really annoys people, by the way. What, Willie? What? What, Willie? <laughs> okay. Okay, now, it's, it's also really important, okay, that when you trap this arm, don't trap it tight, okay? All I'm going to do is take this, I've come here, I'm going to take this over, and my palm is going to rest against my chest. That's all I need to do. I don't need to hold this tight, okay? Because if I hold it tight, 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 I'm trapping myself. Okay, if that's loose, I can get out if I have to. Okay, from here, you're going to bring poor Uki down. Okay, you're going to bring him down here, and you're set right away for your arm off. Okay, and all I've done has gone from here. Let's see, do we want to, you guys? Okay, all I've done is gone from here. Again, if he's a good math person, and I give him enough time, he can still get me over in this position because I'm in a weak position. Okay, so what am I doing wrong? I'm leaning forward. I'm leaning forward. Good. I turn my body, except the arm bar. Now, he could sit back up very easily, okay, and I'm still in trouble. So to avoid that from happening, you bring this under his chin, okay, and now he isn't going to go anywhere, okay. And if he tries to get funny, I can lean back onto my back and I don't take out his elbow. But you're going to realize I'm not grabbing, I'm not really grabbing anything, I could grab my gi if I wanted to, I could grab my hand, but if you just, if you have this here, and you turn your body, it'll lock it up, step over, and you can turn a little more. Yeah, right here, I can feel stretching in my Okay, see so stretching his little toes. Anyway, so that's all you have to do, and you're done. Anything beyond here, you're gonna take out his elbow. Okay? It's okay with What? Me. <laughs> Look like my chiropractor there. Yeah. <laughs> I had a chiropractor. But take him down. Okay. From here. Okay. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> From here, all I want to do is step over with this foot and slowly go down. Ow. And I am done. Ah. Does that hurt, Ron? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And you can stay here for a long time. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. You're going to roll it, okay. If you try and do it the palm thing, this is not going to work against him. He's got too much mass here, okay. So go go for the go for the joint. Once you get here, roll it, okay. Pivot your right leg back, bring him down, okay. You can stop here, okay. You can just do this, stop. Like I said, take your foot over. Okay, go down, sit on it, okay, you put it down here, it doesn't matter. You have a lot of whatever you're comfortable doing. Okay. And you pull sir, it, you pull it here, here. <laughs> sir? Yes, sir. Will you explain to me again why it is you're the one calling for help? <laughs> because if he calls for help, he may have more credibility. <laughs> Don't ask me to explain the logic. It's kind of like if you were ever assaulted, you really, someone attacks you, you need to get to the police first because there are enough cases where someone attacks you and you end up putting them into a pulp and you go home and cool off and they go to the police and say that they, you assaulted them mm -hmm. and then you, it's going to be a tough time explaining it. Okay. Credibility you usually goes to the person that complains in that situation. Okay, that's why. <laughs> now, even it brings up a worthwhile point though. Even if this guy is saying, ouch, don't, it hurts me, and all this other crap, you have to learn to ignore their verbal comments. Okay? It's critical. Just like you don't watch their face. You know, if you know your techniques, 
you'll know how much pressure you're applying, you'll know whether or not you're actually injuring them or not, or just causing a hell of a lot of pain. Okay? And they can scream their little brains out, and you'll know whether you're injuring them or not. Okay? If you hear something or feel something crack or twist, you know, or go crunch in the night, then you <laughs> Is that bad? Then you know you've injured them. Okay. Okay. And then two things are gonna happen. Number one, they may go into shock, in which case they can't feel anything, and you're in trouble. Okay. Or secondly, all they're gonna to want to do is get away from you. Once you injure a person, you lose the ability to control them. So you just need to keep that in mind. If you want to injure them, fine. So you can get away, cool. If you want to control them, to save them for someone else, then you don't want to injure them. Okay? Because once you injure a person, it's a serious injury, they either go into shock, or all they want to do is get away from you. If they're on drugs, you're in deep trouble. Okay? And because in that case, you just need to find something to break a leg, one of their legs with, because they're not going to feel pain or anything, but they, if you break a leg, they can't come after you. Um, easily. Okay, so but that's something else. So, do you, you need to see this again? We got all this other stuff for you. Do you need to see this again? Or one, more one, more, one more time. One more time. Put down the crackpot, bro. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm a little too familiar with the motivation. <laughs> He's going to come at you. Okay, this time we're going to have a little fun with this because I'm bored. Now. Okay. okay, what's going on? <laughs> okay. As he comes in here, I'm going to strike in here first just to distract him. Then I'm going to roll him, take him down. Nothing says you can't do any of this other stuff. Just don't do too much of the other stuff because if they get going in that direction or another direction, you can't get them going forward. Okay? You're take him down. He comes down. Okay? We're going to step. Excuse me. That's a shame. But he doesn't feel it because he's on crack. Does that say on crack? I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, put me in touch. Okay, so, we don't need to see you. Oh, yeah. I got it. Okay, he's got it too. Okay, you need to roll. That's what gets them to go forward a little more and makes it easier for you to take them down. Okay, if you're just trying to push, you can push all day until what do they do? What's the natural reaction? He's going to pull back and go to short block. We'll take that, which we're going to do later. But anyway, okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I just want to mention okay, a couple things before I give you a break. And this, this has to do with uh, use of force. Um, now you put this at the beginning. Okay. Um, in defending yourself, you're allowed to use as much force as is reasonably as is. Different states have, diff have to have it differently. Okay. In Canada, if you think someone's going to attack you, you can do a preemptive attack on them, but you have to be able to prove it before. Okay. Um, California is kind of like New York. Um, you know, cooperate with the assailant, give them anything they want, and still get sued. And still get sued. Right. right. Yeah. Not giving them enough money. Yes. Um, but anyway, if you get into a physical confrontation, which you should try to avoid at all costs, okay, uh, you have the right to reasonable force to protect yourself from further injury and to remove yourself from the situation. Okay? It does not mean that you can jump up and down on the sky five or ten times after you've broken both of his arms. Okay? That's excessive force. Okay? Um, this usually gets decided in a court of law. Okay? There is I think the book is by John Peters, and I've got it in my garage someplace, and I've got to find it. There are a whole series of court cases that can be used to justify uh, various levels of force, and they've even got it bro broken down by charts, by sex, age, height, weight, okay, as to what amount of force you can use against a bigger person, and the, the, the courts would interpret it as being reasonable force. Um, and I need to find that book. Yes. Is that through defensive tanks? I think it's, yes, I think it is. But it came out in like the 60s or 70s. It's a really old resource. His uh, flashlight uh, book also has a lot right. of work. Right, right. So if you can find that, you know, it's a great resource if you ever get yourself in one of those precarious situations. Okay. Um, reasonable force depends on the situation many times too. Okay. Um, if the person has a weapon, you can use a lot more than if they don't have a weapon. Um, 
what you have to keep in mind, and and because I've gotten some email from some people that you know that like two guys jumped three martial artists in some place in Kansas, and it ended up the martial artists ended up being arrested. You want to know why? Because they were able to explain to the police exactly what they had done, and as a result, the courts were able to interpret that they had pre-planned this a, re a response. Uh, okay, so... Okay. Well, if they just if, had the chart with them, it would have been easy. Right. Right. If, no, in, in all seriousness, okay, and, and this is how I would approach it, even if my rank, okay, there is a concept known as mushin, okay, where you are just reacting, you don't know what you've done, okay, you're just reacting with your knowledge, okay. Odds are, if you really are defending yourself, you probably really have no idea exactly what you did. You probably don't. You can sit down, think about it, come up with reasonable probabilities, but you don't want to say, well, he swung at me and blocked his arm, set an arm bar, which I knew would dislocate his elbow, and then I threw him, turned some more, which I knew would dislocate his shoulder, okay? Then I dropped my knee on his cheekbone, which is not really a serious injury, but it causes a lot of blood and pain. You know, you're, what you're doing is you're cooking yourself really nice, okay? So if you ever get in that situation, don't, you know, it's like a traffic accident. You don't have to fill out that form when the officer is there. You can just say, I can't do this now. You need to sit back, find, you know, calm down, find out what happened, okay? And, and then you can, you, then you can do some probability guessing, but still, you don't say what you did, because you're not sure, you put yourself in a position where you might end up with a short end of the courtroom, and you don't want to do that. Um, have I used this stuff? Yes, unfortunately, two or three times. I'm a school teacher, I've used it on students, I've used it on adults. Um, you really have to, if you are involved with, you know, school, you really have to be careful what you do, and, uh, because you don't want to, end up using excessive force like the way okay and I want to come in and do this but he decides he wants to pull back as he pulls back we're just going to put shoulder off the table and now we're done okay now I'm going to show you now turn around okay you don't want your thumb underneath because if you do this you're fighting yourself so get the thumb out of there very close lift up if you need to put a knee on the side of his head or again step over Lift up. Okay. But you want him on his side. Okay. You see here? I'm deflecting across. Okay. Now we've done everything from the outside. We're going to switch to the inside in just a minute. Okay. Okay. So I come here. I want to, he decides he wants to pull back. So rather than fight him, because I don't have a good grip here, I'm going to go with him. Okay. And simply clamp onto my forearm. Okay. Now, if you notice my thumb, my thumb moves out from underneath onto on top, okay? And this thumb here is on top. Your thumb is one of the most useless things you have in terms of maintaining a hold on a person. Because if you grab thumb and fingers, what you're doing is you're spending a lot of energy fighting each other. If you just have one side, you can use your arm and rest of your body for it. So get your thumb on top, thumb on top here, okay? That's all a matter of leverage. Okay, I'm going to take him down. Okay. okay, I can either just get my hands, make sure they're cupped on his knuckles, lift up quickly. His wrist breaks. Okay. If I want to be a little less nice about it, I can put my knee on the side of his head and lift up. Okay. I can take my knee and put it over. Okay. And lift up. Okay. If I want to be really fancy with this, okay, once I've set this up, I can simply keep hold of this, okay, step around him, okay, and bring him over onto his stomach, and I still have an arm off, okay? Turn your head to thank you. It's so important in the situation to determine what you do with this, okay? This gets it really, okay. If, God put this, what's called the jugular notch. He put that there for jiu-jitsu people, okay? <laughs> and what you do is, if you get someone who's choking you, okay, if you want them to go backwards, you can just put your finger there and thrust backwards and you 
you decide to go down, which is okay. But normally you thrust back, okay? You make contact, or if you go behind the jugular notch and push down, they will go down a lot, straight down, okay? In a street situation, if someone is really trying to choke you, okay, okay, he will probably not make it through the day, okay? Because what you will do with a strike like that, you will simply go in and collapse his larynx. Okay, now, if you do that, there is some first aid you can do. Okay. You're not going to ask someone for a ballpoint pen and a razor blade and slice a trachea open, stick the pen in there and do that other neat stuff. Okay. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. Okay. But you say we should do that. No. Because even if you're in a in a class and a person gets struck in the trachea, what it can do because it's just cartilage, it, it can collapse. Okay. And you, for those of you who have ever had to straighten out a person's nose that's been broken, you follow the same process, which is you get the base of your thumbs, okay, in here, and you try and get behind the trachea and push it together in an attempt to get some air, some passage for air, okay. That's all you're going to be able to do. The same thing happens if you uh, choke a person, not choke, but strangle a person out. And you know, in some cases, the carotid artery can collapse. It's kind of like a spaghetti with a what, what call it? Uh, what's the spaghetti with a hole in it? Zini, zini, whatever. Need to get on both sides of the artery and just press it together. Okay. It, it used to be well, you know, if, if they're they, that's how they were blacked out. You kind of like press it up towards your head to get the blood going. The problem is you're not doing anything to uncollapse the carotid artery. Okay. So uh, if you do the sideways thing, it tends to work better. Can you see if it's collapsed? I mean, is it obvious? No. No, it isn't. And it's kind of few because really what will happen, most of the blood that goes to your brain anyway goes through internal arteries. So the stuff in the carotid is just a, it's, all that can do is, is render you <coughs> unconscious due to lack less blood. But it's not going to cut off all the blood to your brain, okay? Because most of it goes through larger arteries that are internal, okay? So just, just so you know that. Um, and people usually recover fairly fast anyway. Okay, so we have this one, okay? What's called the larynx press, okay? Or the strike, okay? Um, and the other one we want to give you, because I've only got like five minutes here, let's have me have a good muscle grab, good muscle grab, okay? I'm not going to care, but whatever you're in the mood for. Okay, okay, now. I'm going to do it here now. Okay, all we want you to do, again, if you want to come up and assist him on his way with a strike, okay, and actually kicking up the groin is a lot better than trying to do a little love tap in front, okay. The, the reason is, okay, if you do a love tap from in front, okay, fine, you're getting the male organs or female organs, and, and it, it, the, the pain difference between male and female isn't that much to argue about, guys, okay? So be aware of that. However, if you come up with a good kick underneath, okay, there is a, what's called a pelvic bone, the urethra goes through it, and that's very easy to fracture, okay? This person is going to need surgery fast, okay? Uh, to say it is extreme, it makes getting kicked in front seem like nothing. Okay, so a good, a good football kick right up the groin, right up the crotch would work wonders. Okay. <laughs> and they can't see the front snap. Yeah. <laughs> I just kicked him. Uh, anyway, okay, now. So, we, we, pardon? He, he, he jumped into it. He jumped into it. Okay, okay. he's going to have a good choke going. Okay, good, we want a good, nice choke. Okay, I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to put my hands here, okay, and all I'm going to do is press down, okay. And from here, at this point, I'm just going to knee him in the face and he's down. That's a quick takedown. Okay, now, what's happening is because he's using muscle at this point, I can just slide my hand out. You've got this high point on the arm here. If you go right inside about an inch and a half, if you slide your hand, you're going to notice a little groove in there. And that's called a jiu-jitsu groove. No, anyway. <laughs> and all you have to do is the same hook concept 
You just go in there and dig in, and there's a nerve there, okay? And bring it down to you, okay? So as he comes in to do his joke, okay, I'm going to just put my hands here, no, 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 okay, and dig in, okay? And once he's here, I want to knee into him, okay? Doesn't matter whether I get him a sternum, stomach, or face, okay? Sternum is actually really good if you can get him there. If you fracture, he's, he's out for several weeks. Okay. It's a very minor injury. I've done it once accidentally to another black belt many years ago. Okay, on a submission. But cracked sternum is a very minor injury. Okay. However, the person will not... Um, it doesn't feel that way. No! <laughs> <laughs> Breathing is a natural function. <laughs> okay. And that's why it's, you know, that's what makes it painful, is that you know, it opens and expands and cracks. Okay. Wow. So we're going to have you try either one of these. They're both fast and they both work fairly fast. We want a good, we want a good, want a good choke or a good muscle type grab, okay? Give your uki something. Line of fire. Okay, rule number one is get out of the line of fire. Number two is take control of the weapon. Okay, those are the rule numbers one and two. You have to do that. Out of the line of fire, take control of the weapon. I'm going to teach you the very basics that apply to almost every technique. The one thing I learned, I mean, I learned gun disarms from jiu-jitsu, but I also learned when I went to Krav Maga and I did some study with them, they simplified it down to about six techniques so that it, it keeps it simple. You can do the same technique for virtually every attack. And that way you don't forget it. You're not thinking, well, if it comes is this way, what do I do? 90% of the techniques are all the same to get started with. And then you can vary it from there. Okay? So the very first one, Jeremy, the very first one is, is the move is rule number one, get out of the line of fire. Well, I can't get out of the line of fire. Well, if he if he's just got the gun right there near my chest, I can't move fast enough before he shoots me. So you've got to learn to do this. Just turn your upper body. Yes, if the gun goes off, it's going to shoot that lady over there. But I don't know her. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we're, as we get more advanced within about an hour, we're going to discuss that because you don't want to get, you want the gun to go off and get your wife shot who just happens to be standing behind you. Okay? There's a lot of techniques that you're gonna, we're going to teach you, but for the basics is you have to be able to turn, okay? Now, let's take it. He's got the right hand. You always turn in almost all cases to the outside of the, of the gun. You don't want to be on the inside of him because then he's got one hand free that he can be grabbing you with trying to choke you and so on. So if he had it in his left hand, I'm not going to turn this way. I'm going to turn this way, okay? Just to get out of the line of fire. Okay, rule number two is to take, we'll do it with the right hand. It's 90, with 90% of, of the world is right-handed. There's a few left hands. I'm a left-handed person. So it's easy for me to do this technique because I'm left-handed. Out of the line of fire, don't do this because he can see what your hands are. Someone sticks a gun in your face, don't move. You say, hey, don't, and, and you be verbal. Don't do anything, I'll do whatever you tell me. And then as you turn, this left hand is underneath. He doesn't see it. It has to come up underneath and grab the barrel and turn it this way. The reason you turn it that way, because if he's got his finger in the trigger, and if the gun goes off, it goes up, not into you. It's gonna come down, but hopefully it's not going to come down on you. The odds are against it. Okay? So now, out of line of fire, come up at the same time. It's, it's a one-two. When I say one-two, it's all one movement. One. Okay? Now, the next thing that you do is you have to... I've got the weapon, but I don't have control yet. Okay, now take your finger out. Okay? <laughs> If he had his finger in the trigger and I go through the whole motion, it will snap the finger. Okay. So if someone has his finger in there, there's a high likelihood that the finger will snap and maybe pull the trigger at the same time. From here, this you have to strong arm it and bring it straight down to the leg and step in so that I'm solid and balanced and he's off balance. 
Now, watch what happens. He's thinking about, oh, he's got the gun, he's got the gun, he's got the gun. Bang! I just hit him in the mouth. But I don't hit him once. I plan it, two, three. Three strikes to the head. He may not, he may just collapse right there. Because he, he walked, literally walked right into the first punch, and then there's two and three. I'm solid right here, and I've got my, I've got the dominant, try to pull the gun away. He doesn't have the control because his, his strength isn't 90 degrees. I want the strength going this way, into his leg. I reach in, I grab the gun, and I twist it out and step back, and then give him instructions to get down. Okay? So, it is just in a steady motion, out of a line of fire, bring it down, one, two, three, take the gun. And you take the gun because his finger is trapped in there. When I turn it 180 degrees, I guarantee you his finger is going to snap. So you're pulling. You're doing a. Are you doing a? You turn it this way. This metal guard will snap the finger. So you're taking counterclockwise, and that's what's snapping the finger back. Then. Correct. 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 I've got the gun jammed down here. The only place the bullet's going to go is that way. So if there's anybody over there, you're not going to do this technique. Like if you're in a crowd. But we're not going to go there yet. We want you to just learn the basics. Okay, so step one, everybody, let's have a little line of fire. Everybody can see that she just got shot. Oh, oh sorry. Because he saw me moving and he pulled the trigger before I could get to it. Okay, now, we're going to, when I was actually doing the uh, problem got class and we were practicing this exact technique, I made a mistake because I did it so fast. And I went like this, and I missed his leg. And I said, oh, this is a normal idea. This will work, too. And I just brought the gun up here like this, OK? At the same time as I hit him three times. Okay. So we're just going to vary it. it is you do the same exact technique. You go for the leg and miss. And if you miss the leg, you hit him and hold it. You, you got him there. And I'm hitting you to the gun away. <laughs> okay, you see he has no pull power in here, so everybody can see where his weapon is, right? So I hit him three times. The left leg slides in behind his knee, and I trap it like this. Okay? The gun is still vertical. If it goes off, it's going to hit him, not you. Okay, it'll shoot him in the back. Okay, so all I want you to do is vary it now. If you accidentally miss the leg, just bring the, bring it up and step behind him and keep hitting. That's the only variation. You'll notice what happened? I'm out of the line of fire. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Give your money, punk, please. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The same technique we were just using. It's the same technique. Okay. That's why I tell you that there's only a few techniques you have to learn and it works for different situations, the same exact technique. So the only variation is instead of it being in the side, it's in the middle of the back. This technique works all the way to there. Hey, what's going on? I didn't move my feet, I just turned my hip. I have my arms down. As I'm rotating, bang, 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 same technique. So let's just practice this. But I want everybody to line up on the wall, so you, or a wall or something, and pretend your hands are at the ATM machine. And all I want you to do is, hey, what's going on? Without, without moving your feet, I want your hip rotation. And then you take a step in as you hit. 